Hello everybody, Frank here and I'm glad that you're here. Today we're going to learn something cool because we're all cool kids. We're going to learn how to put a Windows server onto a Mac computer using virtualization. We're going to use VMware Fusion. And the reason we might want to put it onto a Mac Mini or a MacBook Pro or an iMac is because let's say you're studying SQL Server and you want to have a sandbox environment where you can play with databases, you can practice all sorts of cool stuff with SQL Server, well, you're going to need to install that either in a cloud service like Microsoft Azure, or you're going to need to install it in a sandbox that has Windows Server or Windows 10, but usually Windows Server with SQL Server installed inside of it. Well, how do you do that if you have a Mac computer? A lot of students ask me that very question, so I made this very video for those students and for you. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button because that helps the channel more than you know. And if you want to comment down below on other skills that you'd like to learn, I'm here to help you out. So let's go have a look at how we can install a Windows Server onto a Mac computer. Mac Mini, MacBook Pro, iMac, all those good things. Let's go take a look. So the first step is to go in and start VMware Fusion. And we're going to start it by creating a new virtual machine. So we'll click on new virtual machine. Many different options here, but we're just going to grab an ISO image, drag it onto the VMware Fusion tool, and you'll see that we have server here. I'm going to drag the server ISO on there, and now I can install Windows Server 2019. So I'll say let's continue here, and I'll put some information in. So first I'm going to make my user account, I'm going to make it 2019 Data Center, and I'm going to have the administrator account under my name. I'm going to put in a super secret password. Put it, put it in again just to make sure that I typed it correctly. And then I'll put in my Windows product key, which if you're a student, you can usually get for free. And I'm gonna make my home folder accessible to this machine so that I can access the files on my Mac. Gives me a little bit of a summary here. I can customize the settings and give it a name, for example. And then it's gonna bring up a little dialog box where I can do things like adjust the memory. And I'm gonna give this machine four gigs of memory just to make it a little bit faster. So we'll go in here and I'll start the machine. It'll give me a little uh, warning about side migrations. I'm not going to worry about that right now. It'll work just fine. And then it's going to boot as if it was booting from a DVD, but it's a virtual machine on my Mac. And so now I'm going to be able to boot this machine and the setup will start and it's going to install the Windows files. Now when I use a Windows machine, or sorry, when I use a Mac, whether it's a MacBook Pro or a Mac Mini, I want to make sure I have enough resources to share. So I want to make sure, for example, I have, you know, eight gigs or 16 gigs of RAM so that if I give my virtual machine four, I have some left over for the Mac. So maybe a four, four split or a two, four split, something along those lines. If I have eight gigs of RAM, I usually try to put about 16 to 24 gigs of RAM in the Macs that I have. That's where the Mac minis are really nice. And uh, so we go in, we'll install all the different files. It'll just do this automatically. And as it installs, you'll notice that it's going to ask me to reboot a few times and it's also going to install a few special scripts for VMware Fusion that will help with things like my uh, video drivers and working with the machine. Also, it'll install a uh, set of tools called VMware Tools that'll allow me to adjust the resolution. It'll allow me to drag files and folders from the Mac desktop directly into the virtual machine. In fact, from anywhere in the Mac world. And so here we go, it's gonna boot up it's going to apply my settings and it's going to go ahead and run those scripts in order to get everything working nicely on this machine. So you just have to have a little bit of patience, right? So it's going to run all these uh, different uh, scripts on here. And you'll notice that the resolution will change a few times. It'll actually become quite hard to read in a moment because it's going to have very high resolution. So here we go. And just copying the new files for VMware tools. So that's going to be useful for us. Like I say, VMware Tools controls things like the display and things like the ability to move files easily back and forth between the host, which is your Mac, and the virtual machine, which is my Windows Server 2019. Now, one neat thing that I can do here, so there's just a few messages that come up. They're just basically messages telling you what it's doing. So most of the time we just accept these. It'll all be good. So yes, yes, yes. And then we'll go in and, and you know, we can read them, but Basically, it's just going to say, I'm installing VMware tools and it's going to be cool. And I'm okay with that. So now we go, I could change the display settings, but it's going to restart and it's going to put in a better video driver here because of VMware tools. Now, if I want to send a control alt delete here, what I can do is I'll go up to the top menu 
And up at the top menu, you'll notice I have a menu item, virtual machines. That's where I can go in and send that control alt delete key into the virtual machine. And now I can go in and type my password, type my password in there and it'll log me into the, the server. And now I have a nice sandbox environment. You'll notice the resolution's a bit better here as well. And server manager always comes up in Windows Server. I'm just going to make sure that, uh, that when it comes up, I can say don't show, but I don't mind it. So here we go. And one of the things here is if you look at my account, I'm logged in as my Frank account. So I'm going to sign out. One of the things I often do is I log in as the administrator and I'll change the administrator's password. Uh, you do not want to leave the administrator password blank for many reasons, but also because a lot of Windows services and features won't work with a blank administrator password. So I'll go in, I'll log in as administrator. You'll notice it signs me in automatically because right now it has a blank password, but then I can go in, it sets up the environment for me and I can just go in and change the password. I'm not going to do that here. I'm just showing you that when I log in as administrator, that it doesn't prompt me for a password. So I want to fix that. I want to make sure I assign my administrator a password. Okay. So let's go in and let's uh, pop into the virtual machine and have a look at a few cool things that I like to do when I set things up. I'll just go in as administrator again. So now what I'm going to do is I'll get rid of the server manager dialog box that comes up, but you can see it's got the updates and everything here. So I've got the, you know, server manager there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually install a different browser. Notice down below here, you recognize that? That's Internet Explorer. So I'm going to say don't use the recommended settings and we'll go in here and I'm going to go and I'm going to download and install Firefox or Chrome or some other browser. And I'm just having a little bit of a problem here typing in Firefox today. Let's type this in properly. What? Well, Firefix.zom. Ah, no, I typed it in wrong again. Okay, so let's close this. Let's go ahead and type firefox.com so that I actually have it in there correctly. That's a trick on the internet. You have to put in the correct address. And notice I get this nag message. So I'm going to add, add, close. What I'm doing is I'm making exceptions in Internet Explorer to allow me to go to this website. So I'll go in and I'll say, let's download Firefox. And it's probably going to give me another nag message in a moment here where it's going to say, oh, I don't want you going there. Yeah, so I have to go add, add, close. You may have to do that a few times. And if the download doesn't happen, hit try downloading again. So see if I can grab it. And there we go. And now I can save this. So I'll save this. And then I can run the setup to have Firefox. Now, once I've installed Firefox, um, I'll just close all the windows and then I'll start Firefox and it'll let me make it the default browser, which is a good idea. And then that way, if I'm doing things like installing SQL Server and I go to download SQL Server Management Studio or any of those tools, it'll use Firefox to open up those links. And that's what I'm going to need. So Firefox is my default browser. Just go in here and I'll say no Internet Explorer. We'll do Firefox instead or Chrome. It's fine. And then now I have that as my default browser. Now to ins insert a, a CD-ROM, what I want to do is go up to the virtual machine and I don't have a physical CD-ROM, so I'm going to go in here and choose a different disk image. You'll notice right now I have the server in here. So I'm going to go in here and choose a different ISO and then I'm going to browse to wherever I put my um, ISO for SQL Server. So if I go SQL Server, there's SQL Server ISO. Now I do need to connect the CD-ROM, so I'll say connect. And now it thinks that I've inserted a CD-ROM. And if I go in here and start the setup, I can now start setting up SQL Server, which I won't do in this video, but you can see that the installation comes up and I can start the process of installing. In my case, I'm installing SQL Server 2016 just because I want to play around with some reporting services and some things that are a little bit older, but I want to, I want to play around with them. So here we go. I could do Office, for example. I can install Office on here. Excel is a good example of something I may want the Windows version of as well. Well, I hope that was useful for you and I really hope it was fun. I hope it's something that you can actually implement in order to help you learn better using the technology of a virtual machine. I find virtual machines really nice because I can really have that sandbox environment where no matter what I do in the virtual machine, it doesn't affect my host system. It's very useful. So again, like, subscribe, and here's some more videos of mine that you can take a look at to learn more about how to learn with technology.